thank you once again more. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my three goals is to put Israel in a positive spotlight to combat anti-Semitism and counter the demonization of Israel. Um, and I want to speak a little bit of Israel and putting Israel as a spotlight in our region. Um, so one of the ways I put Israel in a spotlight, I do a lot of experiential marketing where I go to the quads and the campuses. I've done this throughout the West and the West Coast, especially this past two years, where I do different campaigns, right, to not really what I speak about, but more about how the students feel is important to me, right? When they walk, they walk away with a smile, and that's something they'll always remember when it comes to Israel, right? I most recently on Valentine's Day at Wayne State University through the Child's Heart campaign. How do you squeeze in the I right. ask students, what do you do to make the world a better place? How do you sweet in the world? And through the students' this question, I get to know the audience, right? And then about how Israel provides open heart surgeries to children in developing countries. Any right? Another that is just right where I can how is dolphins a mixed piece sustainability. When you think blue and white, when you think Israel, you think green for environmental sustainability, right? So I also speak about coexisting, how Jews and Arabs work side by side, right, in, pe um, in peace and home factory. And if that's possible in the sort of stream factory, that's possible. In Another thing, I speak about what's happening in Sterot, how children in Israel have to run to bomb shelters, right? This is the camp that Craig Dershowitz is for Israel really but I'm also taking it to do this, right? Where we're creating an arts kit, a first aid kit, mental health illness, right? For mental health. When children go to bomb shelters, it's just bad. So when this box bubbles, because students, the children are distracted by bubbles. The, the bubbles take their attention from what's happening to somewhere else. Also, the bubbles, you know, they explode like they're, they go away. And also, when they have a to blow a bubble, they take a deep breath. So these are some of the letters that wrote children in sample this one. To pray for you every day in the strife. You have been along with my America here for you, and you will always be in our prayer. Or this student wrote, I know at times it may seem hopeful, but things are better. Fun living no matter what. This is also so effective because there is such little cost for the students to write this. But next time they see that there is rockets fired in the neighborhoods, feel that their letter is being read right now by a child. And it may like they're making it. I also have an activation called the Be the Ambassador Activation, where it empowers students, take, makes them feel like ambassadors for Israel, where the commitment to be vo the voice for the Jewish people, not just in Israel, but all over the world. So through these experimental marking, I can have the conversation with a student, a random student, the 70% that have no idea about what Israel is, for the first time, I'm in a positive spotlight. I don't do this by myself. When I do these things, I do with the partners on campus, right? I have 12 campuses where I have the fellows on, and each campus I go to, I have these fellows who work with me side by side and teach them the skills, how to communicate effectively for Israel. Boy, when I'm not on campus, they can do this. Also, the great part about tabling, it's a wonderful to build relationships, right? Build strategic relationships with leaders on campus. So this is one goal that I have to put a positive spell. I've been extremely successful with this. The second goal that I have is to combat anti-Semitism. And I do this by myself, right? We're lucky to have Susan Tuckman for the Law and Justice Center. And I know that the team, the fellows really use her as an, to be an example, right? In Urbana Champagne, Right, the chancellor of that campus has a problem with anti Semitism. On campus, right, when you see swastikas painted on the walls on campus, and when you have the housing department lead an anti Israel, right, a propaganda, Palestinian propaganda PowerPoint with paid employees on campus, that's anti Semitism. What is anti Semitism? When the student government passes a bill about the definition of anti Semitism without getting the Jewish groups or the Jewish students. Groups like Chabad and Hello were never counted. Um, were never counseled. So this is one thing that you know I, we do. Also, at Benedict University, where we have a Christian student, Linda, who is so passionate. She also works very closely away, 
and SA, and she wanted to start a club on campus, an Israel club on campus. And the administration refused to do so for months. Um, lastly, I want to speak about what's happening at UCSB, right, Santa Barbara, where if you support certain groups, pro-Israel groups, you will be kicked out of student government. This was a bill that was voted, right, that you, your club will be defunded if you support Israel groups. Fortunately, we have two excellent fellows, and fortunately, we had Susan Tuckman, who led right, the, um, the initiative to mobilize students to counter this, and we were able to do this. I just want to conclude that I don't judge a campus by the anti-Israel activity, by the anti-Zionist activity. What I judge a campus by is about the Zionist students being able to mobilize and take initiative and how a voice is heard. We've seen so many horrible campuses that when you introduce a Zionist movement on the campus, the culture, the climate completely changes. So as long as our voices are heard, we will win. And I say this because the truth is on our side and we're empowered by the facts. So through the fellowship programs, like I said, 12 campuses in our region, we were able to have our voices heard. And through the campus coordinators, we're able to start amazing initiatives like the table that I do, and we'll be able to set minds for Israel by putting Israel in a positive spotlight through emotion. If anybody has questions about any of these things I mentioned, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I also be reached out at nalkoby, n-a-l-k-o-b-y at zoa.org or through Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to your questions. Thanks, Nadav. Um, okay, some New York tri-state updates. So I am a New Yorker born and raised through and through. Um, like I said, I went to NYU. I think New York and New Jersey, Connecticut, what we have is a really mixed batch, but we don't really have anything in the middle. So you have campuses where things are calm, Jewish students are happy, the Jewish communities are strong. So the goals on those campuses are gonna be very different compared to a campus like NYU, where you have SJP or Columbia, where you have SJP, you have apartheid week, um, you have civil rights complaints through the through our again amazing Susan Tuckman with the director, the director of our Center of Law and Justice. Um, so the roles that we can play on those campuses are very different, but I think it really comes down to making sure that you're empowering the students. Um, as a recent college graduate, I remember my experiences with coordinators that I had when I was an involved student, and making sure that I, I'm really enhancing not just their Israel and Zionist experience, but enhancing their entire college experience for a lot of these students irrelevant of their campus. Um, Israel is their whole world. Their Jewish life is their whole world. They're super involved. They, it, it makes or break it. So I, I do feel that it's kind of my job to make sure they have the most positive experience, that they walk away from college with positive memories, with smiles on their faces, that they're not regretful of what they did, that they had support um backing them up so i really think it's about empowering the students and making sure you're not uh we're not coming in and we're not just um taking over their campuses and ostracizing them but we're building them up to be the future leaders to be the strong zionists that we can be and for them to have real tangible skills and moving those into the community so that's kind of my philosophy going in um, with the work that i'm doing but the procedure i would say and the events that we want to do on those different types of campuses are going to be very different so on schools like nyu like columbia a lot of it has to do with getting administrations involved um the legal battles civil rights complaints doing what we can from the top down um versus on campuses where um there is really no sgp there's not um any threats to the jewish community it's about figuring out how we can best be proactive for those students still educate them um I still educate them, still make sure they're they're happy they have Israel activity, but making sure that they're proactive and what can we do in advance to make sure that it doesn't get worse, that these clubs don't start, that the overall um, population is has a positive light of Israel. And even if they don't know, even outside Jewish communities, the overall population of campus doesn't know so much, what they know is positive. So making sure that those efforts are taken, even on campuses where things are great, because that is where I think Zionist communities are behind as we turn our back and they pop up. So we need to make sure that we're constantly involved on as many campuses really as possible to help as many students as possible. Um, other than that, uh, moving moving online has been interesting. I know that the, the benefit of this for the Zionist world is a lot of Israel apartheid weeks were canceled. 
So, but uh, the downside is definitely like Jonathan Orr said, Yom HaZikaron, Yom HaShoah, those are always great festivities. We love to be on campus for those dealing with students celebrating Israel. So for a lot of universities, those have been uh, canceled as well. Um, so hopefully next year will be an opportunity to do it uh, bigger and better. But I think the challenge is now is to remain proactive with students to see, okay, we're not on campus. So, um, the threats seem minimized because there is no campus activity. So how can we keep them engaged? How we can keep them active? How we can keep giving them tools? Because campuses, God willing, will reopen sometime soon, next semester, next year, whatever it is. Um, so we want to make sure they're still they're still ready, and we want to make sure that we're always one step ahead. Amazing. Thanks, Marlene. So stepping into this role about a year ago, it's very interesting for me, stepping stepping out of the shoes of being a student and into the shoes of being a campus coordinator. I actually have the pleasure of currently work 